Hello friends and welcome to a new episode of the Just Another Mindset podcast, the show that inspires you to change and live a more exciting life. My name is Ishmael and each week I bring to you a relevant conversation, message or topic that will not only entertain you, but help you to change towards a more meaningful and satisfying life, individually and collectively. Let us get inspired and embrace collective changes for the better. In today's episode, I have the great joy to talk to David Bloom and we talk about how to design your life and say yes to your dreams. David is a life coach, a successful entrepreneur and a scanner based in Hamburg, Germany. We talk about the path towards acknowledging that you do not like your current career, even though it looks super promising for everybody else. And we discuss the power of a vision session, getting a professional coach and how you can actually put things into practice. David shares his approach that will help you to secure a job that you really love. And we discuss what a scanner personality is and how it fits with a colorful career. We evaluate the difference between finding and creating your perfect job. And we also distinguish between being good at something and really loving something. We provide tools on how to become the detective of your own joy level and how to craft a passion project. Passion projects can be so strong and having an accountability partner to do something together with can even enhance this process. Finally, we talk about the power of self-talk, showing gratitude, and we exchange a lot of different tools that have helped the two of us living a more exciting and happy life. And finally, we discuss why now is the time for your change. And with that, David, a warm welcome to the Just Another Mindset podcast. And my first question for you is, how do you feel today and what is on your mind? <laughs> That's an awesome question. Thanks for welcoming me, Ismail. Um, how do I feel today? Actually, that's a question that I'm always asking my employees as well. So um, I think my monkey mind is on uh, on a on a busy level today because I've been hustling for the last four weeks, um, and I'm really looking forward towards a long weekend with my family. We are uh, driving to the Baltic Sea. So uh, I'm also very pleased to talk with you to go a, a little bit deeper today and just to uh, yeah yeah just to get away from the typical operative stuff that I'm just in the last couple of days. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And yeah, indeed it sounds like you had a pretty busy month over the past four weeks. Do you want to help our audience a little bit as in what you were doing for the past month? And then maybe we can go from there and see what you've been doing for the past few years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's, let's start with that. Um, well, basically what, what I'm doing, um, is we help multi-passionate people, so-called scanner personalities, to figure out um, what kind of job they want to to do and where they actually feel really fulfilled. And with scanner personalities, it's not that easy because we have so many different interests and we basically feel we have thousand ideas and we want thousand lives to live, but there is only one and that puts a lot of pressure under us sometimes and we are just allergic against the nine to five life. And uh, that's how I felt uh, over <laughs> at the beginning of my career. And the last couple of weeks, what we did, my team and I, we were just, um, um, yeah, doing another uh, another launch of our pro product, the Dream Job uh, program. And we just said, okay, let's do it 
um, even better. Um, that's helped people figure out how they can uh, tackle the hidden job market and really find jobs that give them more freedom. And that's what we've been doing over the last four to six weeks with my team. And as I'm a guy who loves to work intense, uh, like in a like in a cycle, maybe for four to six weeks, and then uh, take a deep breath and just take some off time for two or three weeks. Um, I'm now at the end of this cycle, and it feels really uh, rewarding. And also, I I need to. Yeah, um, recharge my batteries now. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, but it sounds like you guys have been busy doing good work, and it also sounds like you have very promising times ahead with the Baltic Sea and with some proper family time. David, before we go into a little bit more detail about scanner um, personalities and the dream job market, you were mentioning your early career or your earlier life before. If you don't mind, maybe you want to share with us a little bit of your story. Where did your career start and what did you do before you helped other people finding their perfect job fit? Yeah, sure. I'd love to do that. Um... For me, I think I have always been following like the typical path, uh, even though my parents told me, you know, just do what you want to do. Um, it felt like a smart decision to just go with business administration. So I didn't have to decide uh, just yet and just have an open mind for anything that comes along. And um, after my uh, bachelor's and my master's where I studied, um, I still didn't really know what I want to do. You know, do I want to go to marketing? Do I want to uh, go to finance? Everyone seemed to have a clear path just going the consulting way or investment banking, just making a lot of money. And I felt like, okay, everybody seems to have figured it out, but I didn't, you know, because, uh, yeah, I, I, I just had so many different interests. And uh, so I just started in sales, basically business development. Um, I uh, was starting in a, in a software company um, working from Barcelona because I just love the sun and the warmth. And uh, I was working there for two years and I was successful, got great feedback. But um, in the morning when I woke up, I pushed the snooze button. And um, even though I had a pretty great life, for what it seemed like, nice flat, uh, great girlfriend, cool friends. I didn't feel fulfilled. Um, I still had that question, where do I belong? And um, where, how do I really find what what makes my inner fire burn? And I didn't feel that in that job. I felt actually pretty lost. And, um, and after a couple of years of just pushing that thought away, uh, I started to to deal with that question on a professional level and got myself some coaching and uh, talked openly about it with my friends and family and just really tried to figure out what I want to do with my life and and from there on it all it all started and like it created a vision uh, for myself and for a life that is uh, further away from the typical 9 to 5 job that I've been following beforehand. Mm. Which probably your marketing job was not only a nine to five, but probably an eight to 11 or something in between. Um, but that makes perfect sense. And I'm very interested in that, let's call it reflection process. So you st said you started talking openly with family and with friends, you got some coaching for yourself. I don't know if you can share with us a little bit about the time span about the thought processes that actually started or that you started appreciating and realizing and not turning back anymore. When, when did that start? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, that thought of, of not being happy snuck up maybe after one year within my job. And yeah, as I said, I tried to push it away and away, but at some point I couldn't push it away anymore. I, I felt like life is too short um, to do that. And so what helped me specifically, I the first time I invested in myself really in a professional coach. And I was in Barcelona. I was just putting in Google like life coach Hamburg <laughs> because I come from Hamburg. And then I found a real nice lady and I decided to, to, um, to create a session with her via Skype. And I remember I was sitting in the kitchen of my employee back in Barcelona over Skype 
I was speaking German, so my bosses couldn't understand me, and I was having that life coaching session. And she asked me, "So, uh, what what do you really want from from your job? And um, and basically, how do you see yourself uh, in the next five years?" And I think that's, of course, a difficult question to answer for 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 especially for scanner personalities like me. But um, uh, we, I remember, we did kind of like a. a, a How, how do you say a vision journey like I, I tried to get out of my head into my heart and, and, and try to visualize some some pictures for myself and then I saw myself for example I was living in Hamburg I was riding my bicycle to my to my office and I saw myself having my own uh, very spacious lightful rooms I saw myself being my own boss um, I saw myself playing tennis at 2 p.m in the afternoon and just being able to decide over my own uh, schedule. Uh, I saw myself working with uh, with people instead of just always in front of the computer. And so there was a vision um, that suddenly appeared. I didn't know how to get there and where to start yet, but that was the first, um, the first part, which I'm always doing with my clients now as well. Um, figure out uh, what do you want to strive For. and uh, that doesn't only have to be the job but also private like personal stuff how do you want to live right and then the second part when i when i when i had that kind of first version i asked myself how can i get there and that was something that took a while because i feel we are daydreaming sometimes about a better future and yet there's that execution part that's missing because We have a job, as you said, that usually from eight to seven and there's not much energy and so on. And, and that's where I also invested in a coach that helped me execute these things. We we figured out, okay, what would be the next steps to do? And, and I decided, uh, okay, the best thing to maybe become my own boss is, uh, is to become a coach, is to, to, to use my inherent strengths of empathy and communication uh, to, to make that maybe a living. And that was one step. Uh, and uh, then there was that second step. I need to make money. So I don't know yet how to make money as a coach. <laughs> It will take some time. So I found a job that uh, that will pay my rent, um, but which also gave me time um, to work on my own business because I just took a job where I'm working 80% Monday till Thursday. And so um, it became that gradual journey i moved back to hamburg i told friends and family about that vision and that goal what which first felt really surreal um but the more i talked about it the more it became um, reality but yeah of course um that process uh, uh, took a while i think from that first coaching session to me working uh, four days a week and starting my Uh, my coaching program or education how to become a coach that took uh, one and a half to two years and then from there on it it, it developed uh, yeah over the years yes mm. two questions that came to mind while you were talking and that was very interesting what you just said are you still working together with that particular life coach or with a coach yourself <laughs> great question uh, actually it's funny timing because um, just three months ago, I decided to to call her up again after now it's been maybe eight years uh, uh, after we've had that first session. And I, I knocked at her door and said, hey, Miss Kreuzfeld, I don't know if you remember me, but you helped me change my life. Uh, uh, I'd like to have another vision session with you. <laughs> and now we can do it in person because I'm back in Hamburg. And so, yes, we just have three sessions over the last couple of months. And um, I just wanted to you know, um, to, to check in and, and see what kind of vision comes next for me over the last, uh, over the next years. And that was a helpful session again. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like, it sounds like, and I'm sure she's super satisfied and happy to see that eight years later, you come again for a vision. And maybe we can use that later to talk a little bit about your outlook and what's coming next in your life. A second question that I also noted down while you were talking is how much of that vision that you initially created are you living today? Hmm. Oh man, that's an amazing question because, uh, well, there's, there's two answers to this, I think. Um, many ingredients that I saw are today in my life. Um, 
mostly the freedom part and um, being my own boss, working with people that I that I really like and 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 you know driving my bike to the office. But for example, I don't have my own office; I have a co-working space. And uh, what I want to say with uh, to to visions and vision boards. Sometimes we feel so pressured to reach these kind of goals, but the way I see vision boards today is, it just gives gives us a, a starting point. It just gives us a, a reason to change something, and 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 it's like a huge life magnet that pulls you towards one direction. But that's what I see: it is a direction uh, rather than a destination, because. On that way to that vision, sometimes your path changes completely, but you would never have started without that vision. And, and, and so you can be a more, little bit more flexible and relaxed concerning, okay, I need to reach exactly this, uh, but you just have to strive towards it. And sometimes it changes. <laughs> Yes. No, absolutely. And and that question was exactly for that thought that maybe you do not know where exactly you're going to be in five years or where you want to be in five years, but just starting to go or starting to walk, starting to run, depending on your pace is a good mm -hmm. start. And then you're going to take different routes, right? But as you said, as we can hear, you take a route that gives you a lot of freedom and that also yeah satisfies you and that creates a much happier life for you than in the standard job that you had before that okay is that also something that you do together with your clients or what is the process that you help other individuals find their best fit job yeah mm. Basically, we can, to simplify it, we can break it down into three phases or, or steps. Step one is um, to create that, I, I call it the multi-purpose vision, um, to ask yourself, how sh do you want your life to look, um, not only on a job level, but also on a, on a private, on a personal level? Where, what do you want to do as hobbies? How do you... Uh, want to behave as a, as a father or as a friend when do you want to wake up um, and of course um, what do you want to do business-wise with which people do you want to work um, do you want to work from Spain or from from Hamburg how big should be the team and so on because people only usually think in business positions like should I be project manager or marketing manager and that's usually the wrong approach we um, we first check what you want your life to be like and how you want to feel and then that's the first part so you have more clarity that's all always the most important ingredient that usually is missing and then in the second part um, we help people figure out which companies uh, which industries fit those needs and we don't usually go for the position approach so as i said product manager but which company has those kind of values that give you the life that you want to live and um, that's the second part so we become very specific and check out which companies fit that profile that that vision that you want to that you want to live in that uh, your, your strength that you want to bring to the market and third part is uh, we help our clients um, with their newborn clarity and also with their confidence that they created over that clarity uh, to knock at those um, business stores and uh, and not go the typical way of applying uh, classy online with a CV um, and a standard letter but basically knocking at their doors on a creative way with a portfolio with a cool video with a creating a personal email to the um, to the ceo um, or the human resources department and 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 to stand out of the crowd and so that gives them the possibility to work in their dream firms and uh, yeah to stick out and, and 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 just come up with all they have in an authentic way and yeah so we basically trick the system a little bit and help people to yeah use their superpowers such as charisma and uh, communication skills um, to to find a job they love mm, no absolutely like i think authenticity is one big ingredient if we talk about jobs you love and finding the jobs that you love then david i would be interested who is your if there is something like that typical client is it the david from eight years ago or whom do you specialize working with mm. 
<laughs> That's a great question. You know, um, as marketers, you always are being told uh, that you need some, like a kind of a persona, like a, an ideal client. And uh, we have that person, re we have it in mind. Um, uh, I still um, think, well, the, the things that come to my mind uh, when I talk about my clients is that they have an incredible hunger for they're very hungry for for growth and for for living an adventurous life scanner personalities basically um they have incredible portfolio of of skills and interests and one of their biggest uh, dilemmas is that they don't feel they have that one skill that makes them special uh, they are always uh, asking themselves what am i really good in um, because um, it's not a typical hard skill that we have but mostly i call them on my clients soft skill heroes people who are incredibly passionate energetic empathetic um, authentic as you said and humorous they are just fun people to hang out with they are usually more on the optimism side and um, of course i could also go now into you know typical age or so but that's not that thing i think that's the dna of our clients and um and they they, they just want to move something in the world you know and and still they want a good work-life balance and um And I feel that's that's mostly what 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 comes to my mind when I see my clients. But of course, they usually also have a business background, and um, yeah, I think that I don't even need to, to add anything more. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I think that really helped us and helped me for uh, especially to understand better what a scanner personality is. And how do your clients realize themselves that they are scanner uh, personalities or that they have a personality that just attracts so many different fields of work? Because from what I understand, it's not that very admirable, at least from my perspective, you find one thing in your life and you specialize on it. And then for 40, 50 years, you become the very expert and you win the Nobel Prize in physics or in literature or in something, right? I mean, I also, I, I think talking from my personal perspective, I did not know, I think we took very similar paths, uh, studying business for different reasons in different countries, seeking for adventure and so forth. Um, but how does a person understand that he or she, in fact, is a scanner mentality and how they then reach out to you or how do you support them then? Mm, yeah, that's a wonderful question. I think maybe some of um, your listeners have already identified. I gave some clues. Maybe I can give some more. Mm, again, I think if you feel like you want to live a thousand different lives one day you want to be gardener uh, the other day you want to be speaker uh, the other day you want to just travel the world and you feel that you want to put everything in that one life that's a typical sign for you being a scanner um, some often the problem is that that you feel you don't stick to a thing until uh, you know you 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 are angry at yourself sometimes that you don't push through and that after two or three years within a company you feel like it's time to move on again and as society tells you uh, then you're a kind of a jumper that cannot decide for one thing you feel bad about yourself even though it's in your inherent nature as you said to be an adventurer and to live also many different jobs and also make yourself a colorful career and um i that that uh, that mm, scanner personality it comes from uh, from an author barbara share who who first wrote about these um, wonderful people and she said the, the the biggest problem scanner personalities have is that they are not cool with themselves being a scanner personality even though it is it can be the most beautiful thing because if you think about it um Of course, you can be that person who are, is an expert and really deep dives into physics or into coding or whatever and just does this for the rest of my life. But as you said, I think you feel the same way. 
we would be bored with that and we want to just explore the most different playgrounds of life and and jump around on those playgrounds and if we if we become fine with this and say that's part of my journey and my mission is maybe just you know seek so many different experiences and by this i become better and putting things together and you know bringing all the different knowledges onto the table uh, wow then that maybe is my expertise you know and uh, so yes that's i think when when you feel that desire to to have different playgrounds and sometimes you feel bad about yourself uh, then then you might be a scanner <laughs> Hmm. Wonderful. Thanks for that explanation. And I have yet another follow up question there. And it's a little bit personal. So you may or may not decide to cut that. But from when doing research on you as a person, there is a lot of different, super exciting, super interesting projects that we can that we haven't talked about yet. And you also said that you like to help scanners because you would describe yourself as a scanner mentality. No? And what you said, like your adventure is you want to do different things. Is the job, your current job of being a life coach, something that you picture yourself doing for the rest of your life? Or do you think there's also more for David very personally? Yeah, it's a, it's a really great question. Uh, it's, uh, um, no, actually, this, um, this has changed already. Uh, I don't see myself as a life coach anymore. I started being a life coach, um, which I, those skills I still use for my clients. But now I basically teach my employees, uh, my team to become better life coaches. And what I figured out is um, to be an entrepreneur is one of the really, really interesting jobs for a scanner uh, because it's just so diverse. And uh, so now I can, you know, learn marketing i can learn how to use linkedin i can learn how to help people uh get a dream job i can learn how to teach uh, my team there's suddenly so many different playgrounds and that's what i figured out always in my jobs or internships i love the, those things that gave me the, the variety because as a scanner i feel alive with that and um I don't know what I will be doing in, in five years. Um, I think that's basically right now my vision and that can change again, uh, is that we will have a company with different branches, basically. One branch uh, will be helping people to figure out their dream job. One branch, maybe at some point I, I say, I want to help couples live a more fulfilling relationship because I just love psychology and want to help people to, you know, to be a loving couple. And, 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 and sometime maybe we say, let's go into the experience uh, journey. We are basically now climbing the Alps, uh, the, the mountains uh, with, with our clients in, in July, just to, you know, do something really crazy. And, and, and yes, I think that's one of the most fulfilling things um, about being an entrepreneur, at least for a scan of personality is that it never gets boring. <laughs> and maybe, you know, in five years we'll talk and I will be doing something completely different, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's the beauty about it. We, we don't really have to figure it out hundred percent just to have a cool vision that yeah pushes us forward. No, wonderful. Exactly. And just keep moving, keep going yourself. Like as you tell your clients to keep moving, you keep moving yourself and then you develop a business and you may have different business ideas or business models that you can branch under one common business or even with multiple businesses. That sounds very interesting. And I'm very excited indeed to talk uh, in five years and to talk also in between. So that sounds very exciting and interesting. One thought uh, that again came up when you talked, I just recently, actually today when doing sports before this very podcast, I listened to a podcast with Marcus Buckingham and he said he worked for a Gallup for 25 years and he's also very much into personal development. And he said, you don't really find your dream job, you create your dream job. Do you have any thoughts on that? Mm. Um, I think he has a very good point. Um, I, I, let's answer it. Let's answer it in two ways. Uh, one, I think as an entrepreneur, if you do your own baby, your own business, it's more uh, logical. Like you say, okay, if you 
do your own business, you can create it in a way that you want to shape it. Okay, that makes sense. But still, um, also as an employee, I think you can have you have a lot of power to create your dream job. Um, just imagine if you are an employee and and you you are confident and you know your strength and you know how to also. Um, yeah sell yourself basically uh you have the power to talk to your colleagues your boss the ceo wherever you work and tell them um where you're good at and how they can use your skills best um to create the most value for your um, company uh, i feel that's often the problem that people don't dare to to speak up and 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 to dare to design their jobs according to their needs and sometimes this means that you have to switch jobs and sometimes that means that the the, the values and the culture do not fit and so you have to figure out something new but yes you can create your dream job and i think it's the really important part because it's more um, proactive uh, if you're just looking and hoping to find um, that means the perfect job is already waiting for you but yes uh, you have to figure out where to find a company that's cool and then you have to craft a little bit yourself which takes guts mm. no absolutely and i think it also depends on the working environment that you have if you work in a company with three people it's probably different creating a job making that very dream job than if it's 300 3000 or 30000 people right so i think a different skill and craftsmanship is required to yeah get or create this very job another topic they discussed is that it's partially not only about what you're good at but what you enjoy doing that should be steering you i don't know if you have some thoughts on that and the the thought behind just to give some context is only because david is very good in marketing or in sales for this particular it company doesn't mean that this should be what he's doing all his life but if he finds value for himself if he finds much more joy in creating new businesses in being a life coach and so forth so how do you approach that like being good at and really liking something oh yeah that's such a good um i think it's so important to differentiate um a little bit uh i don't know if you've heard about the concept of the zone of genius um because that's a really great approach basically you have two axes the x and the y and there's that one x that's just your level of excellence so where you're good at and then there is a level of passion uh so what you really like and often uh, especially also scanner personalities because they are very talented they can uh, get better in things very fast and so sometimes they just get tasks that other people maybe don't want to do or they just grow into it because they're good at it but it doesn't make them feel alive and still they 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 do it because they're good at it as you said and and that's dangerous it's also called the danger zone where you are high excellent low passion because you don't feel alive and that's sometimes a problem when you come back home and you feel not alive it's probably because you've done too many things that are in that zone and one thing I, I, I advise my clients to do, and I, I try to do myself, um, is to track, uh, to track my daily tasks and just to create maybe a digital journey, a journal. It can be on Evernote or, you know, the digital notes. And just observe yourself when you do tasks. Um, how much passion do I have for that task and how good do I feel in that task? And then um, after becoming like more the detective of your joy level, you can uh, figure out how can I do more of those things that make me uh, that make me happy. For example, I figured out that when I'm doing presentations for uh, for clients when I was still employed, or when I when I do team meetings, like everything that is connected with you know uh, direct people interaction, I feel very alive. When I'm on stage, I feel very alive. Um, when I teach, I feel very alive. And so for me, at some point, it was clear I need also to get on stage. I need to do digital webinars. I need to start a podcast. 
Um, and for employees, this can mean that, you know, they need to figure out a path where they can maybe within their company teach other people, or you can start a passion project and create a podcast about a topic that you love. It doesn't always have to be in that working environment. You can also do something that's in your private zone and, and, and make things that make you feel alive. But yes, really great differentiation. It's true. Sometimes you're mm -hmm. stuck in that danger zone. Thank you very much for the explanation here and, and your thoughts on that. You just mentioned a passion project. What do you understand a passion project to be? Maybe we start there and then I'm sure I have some follow up questions. Yeah, sure. I love to talk about those, uh, those passion projects because they are so uh, like they are such a cool tool for scanner personalities because um, let's be honest, no job will ever be 100% perfect for you. They, it, it, I don't know, maybe you'll figure it out, you're perfect. I sometimes also feel like that my job is not perfect. There's no perfect. But um, sometimes you're just in a job that doesn't really fulfill you and you don't know yet how to find, find that new job. But what you can always do is make the best out of your time uh, when you are off, right? And uh, we figure out with our clients what can be project that, projects that would light up your heart and that you can do in your free time maybe two three hours a week whatever that is and just to give you an example from our clients um, one of our um, clients just loves to work with her hands and to create uh, fashion items you know something that I would never be good at, but she just loves doing it. And then uh, she said, but I cannot start a business with this. And I told her, um, Christina, you don't need to make money with it. It can just be a passion project, something you just love to do and uh, you're looking forward to when you come back home. And so she started creating those bags and now she sells it via Etsy, that online shop, to New York City, uh, to San Francisco, to Paris, because people love her bags, but she doesn't do it for money because that would stress her out. And um, other clients start, as I said, podcasts or they start coaching, but just as a passion project, that means without putting pressure on you that you need to make money or you need to make a living but um, that you free up time for something that makes your heart beat and that's a passion project and uh, yes I think for scanner personalities it's amazing because you can also just do that for two weeks or four weeks just test the passion project if you like it continue if don't you throw it overboard you said I tried that next passion project and just don't pressure yourself with ah, I need to stick to it for the rest of my life bullshit mm. And let's stick with that. How many passion projects have you been busy with and you may choose the time span? Is it the last year? Is it the last 10 years or the examples you may if you want to give some? Oh, I cannot uh, this um but I cannot count how many things I have started and uh some things have uh, have, have stuck. For example, something really simple. One passion project I started with my Magic Morning, which I read about, you know, I'm a personal development freak. Uh, that was a passion project for 30 days where I said, okay, I want to do some sports things, something that keeps me, uh, keeps my mind balanced or some meditation, so on. Um, that came a lifelong journey, which now after even six years, I'm so in that Magic Morning. It helps me so much. It started as a passion project. Um, and I, I, I failed many times um, in a way that I didn't stick to it. But at some point it stuck. I, I tried again and, and, and then it stuck. Uh, one passion project I'm having now, uh, I was being sold like a, 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 um, a specific like a membership. And where I say, okay, now for the next six months, I need to do those 40 sessions, which are high intensity. I say, okay, I just want to become really fit again. So I hope I will stick to it. Let's see. But that's, for example, one passion project. Uh, one other passion project um, we started that was crazy. We're just like a super marathon over three days where we just came five people together and said okay we try to go for two marathons in a row over the next four days uh, four hours sleeping uh, four hours uh, walking four hours sleeping four hours. super crazy super stupid but this kind of passion project that they make you feel alive and um and i think what helps us 
sometimes to have somebody that that comes along with you and um you know just to make time and try uh, from that another passion project was with one of my friends we started a new podcast because he wanted to have a passion project i said i'm joining you so there was born a new podcast which is gin tonic and andere sorgen so gin tonic and other thoroughs where we're speaking about the problems of our generation and um yeah so uncountable projects some of them still alive some of them not but i see it as like uh as a part of my my life museum and uh, cool experiences um yeah absolutely thank you so much for sharing that and i can hear that you talk with passion about the different passion projects you created there i would be interested do you allocate a certain amount of time per week is it every friday afternoon that you go for your passion projects or are you someone who says okay now after this big sale for example let's make it tangible i have three weeks so i can invest 10 days only into my big passion project that's going on so do you have a structure or do you also I have not figured out the perfect structure for me. Maybe it's because I'm a scanner and there is not that perfect structure, <laughs> to be honest. Um, that So that's just really honest. Um, I think what really helps again is an accountability partner, someone that you can talk to about that project and tell them, please hold me accountable or be my partner. So we do it together. That helps me a lot. Um, one thing that I have structured and that is uh, non-negotiable for me when I look at like structure uh, is that, again, is that magic morning? Is that 30 minutes to one hour? It depends on how much time you have, but put time into my body, into my soul before the whole day starts. Because I have tried many times um, blocking time at 5 p.m. in the afternoon or 7 p.m. For me, that's really difficult. Um, so still a scanner personality sometimes needs a frame because otherwise we feel so lost. And so I would start with a magic morning. And for passion projects, I would try to get someone on board and then maybe say, hey, let's have that. If you have a, like a jogging pro passion project or tennis passion project, you say every other Monday, we meet for two hours and suddenly it's in your schedule and that helps a lot. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. Having a buddy or even multiple buddies that you can hold each other accountable for, that you can have even more fun, let's face it. No? Like most activities are more fun if you enjoy them with somebody else, at least for a lot of people, not for all the people. I also acknowledge that. Um, you talked about your magic morning now a couple of times. How does that look like? You said 30 to 60 minutes David time, but what can we picture you doing in the morning and how does it look? When do you start? Yeah, sure. Uh, I love to talk about that as well, because I think besides that first coaching session, everything else, uh, it all started with a magic morning in a way. Um, first of all, let me sell it to you. One of my good friends who started that magic morning said, no, David, when I have that magic morning, I feel I'm already ahead of the day, like in a soccer match, two to zero. Now nobody can steal it anymore. And, um, you know, there's so many smart sayings about it. Win the morning, win the day. Um, or if you want to start something big, you need to start with something small. And I feel all of those things, they're so freaking true. And <laughs> for those who have already tried creating that magic morning and failed it's totally normal it took me so long to find a routine that that held um so that's as, as a pretext now um to give you an idea of how my magic morning looks like um there's three parts that i integrate and again for everyone there's different ingredients but that's the three things that we also uh, go through with with our clients because besides a dream job we help them figure out how to you know make their day great um one part is always in a way movement kind of some kind of sports but don't you don't need to put on your running shoes and you know, run for 30 minutes is usually way too ambitious. It starts raining, it will be cold, then you don't do it. 
find something that's easy to do. So I do a really simple seven minute workout um, with an app. Um, and also a like, tiny bonus tip. If you have snoozed too, ma too many times and you just have five minutes, always from that <laughs> you know, routine that you said that you would do, find a mini version of it that you can do in 30 seconds so if i if i don't have the time or i did if i didn't manage i just do 20 jumping jacks that t takes 30 seconds 30 seconds you always have 30 seconds right so that kind of movement it can be yoga it can be biceps training whatever you, you like to do um the second part is um is uh, some kind of silence uh scanner personalities uh, tend to be in the head a lot it's always hectic uh, many things to do many things on our play we want to get shit done uh, but that can be very tiring so um, before the day starts i train myself um, to be calm and, and and that sets the tone for the day at least a little bit so there can be different things for some it might be um, short meditation five minutes um, for some, it might be yoga practice. I switch that up from time to time. Right now, I, I, I just found yoga for myself, which I really like doing. Before that, I, I did a five-minute meditation, sometimes from Tony Robbins, sometimes from Peter Bear. We can put some links um, for those who are interested in that. So that's the second part. It can be journaling, something that gives you some stillness. And the third part, which I find incredibly helpful and where i insist my clients to do it is um is self-talk <laughs> self-talk which might sound crazy but uh, for those who think i cannot talk to myself uh, you, you do it every minute of your day you give yourself self-talk and usually you give yourself shitty self-talk <laughs> so you're criticizing yourself or you find that yourself you, you, you're slow or whatever it is you know that inner voice is in your head totally normal um so um i like to give that sound some positivity so i practice myself to be kind to myself i always standing on my couch you know standing up on my couch that's just my crazy ritual my girlfriend's always looking at me since yeah she's like what the hell is this guy doing uh but <laughs> you have to get used to that that's okay and um yeah i, I tell myself what i want to hear from a good friend like okay david um man i i, I that's maybe for some people it's too advanced but i love i love you like you're man I'm, I'm proud of yourself and remember enjoy it today like yes you have so many goals but keep calm you're already there enjoy the journey and these kind of things uh, help me to get into the groove and be a good body for myself and uh, that might sound weird but if you want to have an exceptional life and then have a life that, of the one percent you need to do those things that 99 percent just don't want to do and uh, that makes a difference and i think that if you want to start somewhere start there no, absolutely. I love this self-talk idea and also a little bonus. I really like this idea of talking to yourself, but I believe it was in the Huberman lab. I will figure out which exact episode it mm -hmm. was, but it's also telling yourself gratification basically helps a lot, mm -hmm. but it also helps a lot or even a little bit more if somebody else talks to you and tells you what do i like about you david what are you strong mm -hmm. at what do i acknowledge about you having done today so that's actually something and we've done that before we listened to that particular episode um, my partner and i have been doing for quite some time that every night we have a cool. gratitude journal where we write down what are we thankful for today especially about yours the other person right so it also helps oh, to man, hear amazing. it from another person so i don't know if you want to test that out yourself uh, i already encourage my audience to do so and i will happily cool. do so again so that sounds really cool the self-talk and i think you can combine it maybe in the morning you talk to yourself and in the afternoon, evening, you talk to your partner or a friend. I mean, you can, again, I think this, you mentioned it, this buddy can help tremendously to make changes in your life. Yeah, thanks for that uh, impulse. It's really great. Yes. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, David, I'm looking a little bit at the time, but earlier you said that you are seeing a life coach yourself again, and you wanted to maybe share a little bit of the outlook with us. So what is 2022 holding for you? What are your plans and where is David developing to? Hmm. 
That's a, a great um, question. Just to give you some context, um, four months ago, I was in a situation where I feel like I had so many goals checked. Like created my own business, helping other people, um, created that podcast, creating a team. And it was just a wow. Uh, in a way, I have arrived. Like today was was yesterday's dream, um, and 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 now what's next? You know, the, the scanner personality again comes through. It's we are we will never quite feel that we arrived because that's not our nature and um, still we can get that feeling of having arrived by enjoying the journey and understanding it's the path uh, that gives us the joy and um, just to give you some pretext that was my situation and um, concerning the vision for for the next couple of years um, I'm not quite there yet um also the session with my with my coach it helped me to figure out um, different things for example i want to be more on stage again it's something when we're talking about the zone of genius i feel so the so aligned the passion with my excellence i just love to shake crowds um, so that will be one thing that I will give more space. Um, and the second part is actually the office uh, that I was dreaming about from seven, eight years ago. I feel it's time to create my own um, office in Hamburg. That was one part that um, that we were talking about to have my own, like give my team a home and also uh, create some crazy stage in that office where we can also make workshops with our clients and we just people can express themselves something that came up um, over the last years that i wanted to create and thirdly uh was something that that we were talking about as well like that portfolio company where we just you know do whatever we feel like doing be crazy about projects you know maybe we are going for route 66 adventure with some of our clients or you know going to new york uh, theater where we book that theater and whatever bring people on stage uh, um, just going into schools helping pe people to figure out what they want to do with their lives there's all those um, crazy ideas in our heads that we that we want to give space and um yeah so uh besides that just personally um I just want to have a wonderful uh, bright flat with my with my with my lady and spend so much good times on the tennis court and and, uh, and good times uh, with my friends. You know, that's a, the the basics. I it always comes back to the basics, and that's what I would like to tell people as well. Sometimes we're thinking about that crazy life, but often it's ingredients that you already have, and uh, that you just need to reactivate, like get a good night with your your friends and play play a game and talk tell your girlfriend or your boyfriend that you love her um, whatever it is it's those small things that make the difference i feel um mm. besides that cool vision yes absolutely absolutely and looking at those basics and appreciating those basics that there is so much worth and value so maybe before we wrap up because that's a question that just popped up in my mind when you were talking about your inner feelings and so forth why is now the right time to change something and to follow your desire and to re-evaluate your basics and so forth <sighs> you know I think it was Tim Ferriss who said, for all the difficult things in life, um, it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you, if it's meaning like creating a, a life plan for yourself, a vision or becoming a father or a mother or creating your own uh, company and quitting your job. It's never, it will never feel like the right timing. It will never ever feel like we are ready and so he said it's it's important that we create that urgency in ourselves and i think especially scanner personalities are so hungry for life 
um, sometimes we get drained by the people around us and our full agendas and just I think those kind of podcasts and your podcast helps us to help people I hope to shake them and uh, and to remind themselves that time is precious and um, and yes for me I have had the uh, just a side note we don't have to go deep in that um, but I was uh, I, I had that moment when my when I was 20 my my father died of uh, of cancer and um, even though that was of course an extremely sad uh, experience it helped me and my future self and today to 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 realize that life is fucking short and uh, sometimes we need a crisis to wake up but that's uh, that's uh, I, I like it better if we if we if we feel that from just a normal life point where we don't have to wait for crisis or being not healthy or a family member dying and so i appreciate your work and uh, also with my work we just want to shake people and say let's go now Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I very much agree that crisis can help, but listening to a podcast episode or reading a blog post or talking to the right person might be the better or easier way or whichever uh, descriptive norm we want to use here, but it's also a way. So David, if people want to know more about you, which I'm sure they do, and if they feel they want to start acting, and if they feel they want to change something, where do they reach out to you? Where do they find out more about you? Yeah, um, I mean, probably we will put some things in the show notes. I think the easiest way you could connect um, via LinkedIn, um, just put in David Blum, B-L-U-M. Um, my own podcast, um, the name is Design Your Life, and you will figure that out as well. And of course, the website we can put in the show notes. But I, I'd say just find me on LinkedIn, shoot me a message if you want, and uh, listen to the podcast if you if you feel uh, inspired. Absolutely. And for sure. And obviously, I'm going to link all the profiles in the notes. And I have a few questions, three, in fact, that I ask each and every of my guests. But David, before we go there, I really want to acknowledge you for the great work that you're doing and for the great support who you are for so many people out there. And as a team member, as a boss, as a coach, as a partner, as so many things. So thank you very much for what you're doing. And thank you very much for choosing the path that you're on. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, Ismail. Very good. David, so here comes the first of my final three question. And that is what motivated and influenced you over the past week? <laughs> wow, what motivated and influenced you over the past week? I think in that case, because we were working on that program, it was just to become better. <laughs> it was just inherent hunger for, for improving. And uh, I think that was something that we were talking about uh, with the team. And that was the most important driver of the last couple of weeks and that last week particularly, yeah. Wonderful. Stay hungry. Very good. And I'm very yeah, excited to hungry. see what's happening there. So I love that answer. Thank you. The second question, David, would be who are your mentors and whom do you personally look up to? Mm, great question. <laughs> One thing I mentioned him earlier and I'm listening right now again to his podcast is uh, Tim Ferriss mm -hmm. because he's just uh, the human guinea pig he's just a little bit wonderful crazy and uh, heartwarming um, the second if i may name three <laughs> is my mom <laughs> because nice. she's just such a cool and warming person she gave me the the love and the confidence that helped me become the person i am uh, i am today and the third, um, the third mentor that sound maybe sounds a little bit cheesy. Um, no, I will so, so, so say someone different because they, he has been like influencing my life a lot over the last couple of months. Is um, Eckhart Tolle. Um, 
because yeah i've i've been trying to practice the, the the power of being in the moment and the power of now and as i'm a scanner i'm with my thoughts i tend to be all over the place and enjoying that moment you know talking about it like enjoying the path not you know the the future the, the destination oh, this guy is, is it's spiritual shit uh i had to open that door to that um to that aspect of of life um but now I figure out, wow, that's basically, if, if you figure this out, everything will be awesome. <laughs> so, yes, I, I'd like to say Eckhart Tolle and uh, that book recommendation. Um, I think in, I don't know, in Germany it's called Jetzt, Die Kraft der Gegenwart. I think in English it's called Now. The Power of Now, it's called. And it's super funny because just as you say that, I'm in Chapter 7 of New Earth. So another book from Eckhart Tolle. And it's in fact a book I'm reading together with a friend, which is also something I can very much recommend. Or if you find cool. another Eckhart Tolle you want to read with a buddy, reach out. I'm here. Um, I really love his. It's spiritual, fully agree, but it's very strong and it's very good stuff and obviously tim and another shout out to your mom and yeah i love that answer for the mentors as well thank you david cool cool you have a book buddy i like that <laughs> the third question and that is a little bit hypothetical but still i call it the three truths and i would like you to imagine to picture yourself traveling alone in space Actually, for quite some time, for a couple of months or even years. And after a long, long journey, you encounter a human-like species. And they can only process three facts about humanity before they decide whether or not they want to get to know them. What do you tell them? Hmm. Three facts about uh, humanity? Holy shit, that's a difficult question, man. <laughs> oh man okay let me think um uh, num number one sometimes when they forget about being too serious they laugh so much that that they are actually crying and that's such a beautiful thing <laughs> love it Number two, they are, even though it doesn't look like it sometimes, um, what makes their lives really rich is when they come together at a fireside and share emotions and stories. And that's what makes ourselves human. And it, it's amazing to be on those firesides. <laughs> so that's maybe number two. And Number three, we're really a little bit fucked up, but that's, I guess, what makes us human. And it will never get boring when you join the earth and, uh, yeah, <laughs> and enjoy observing the craziness. I hope in the end there will be a happier end. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. Very nice words you found there and very nice facts and truths you found there. And with that, David, thank you so much for being a guest on the Just Another Mindset podcast and hopefully talk to you very soon again. Thank you for having me, Ismail. All the best for you. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you enjoy this podcast and learn from it, please feel free to share this episode with a friend or two and make sure to subscribe to the Just Another Mindset podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please use the next 10 seconds to give the Just Another Mindset podcast a rating and know that you will help me to create more meaningful content like this and also that it will help other people to find this content and get inspired as well. If there is any future topic or guest that you would like to hear more about on the Just Another Mindset podcast, please let me know by leaving a comment on YouTube or sending a mail directly to contact at ishmaelwondergarten.com. And if nobody told you lately, be reminded that you are worthy, you matter, and you can achieve anything. Come on, what makes you happy?
Therapy. Be yourself positive. Just another mindset.